In uh, this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to write rules for arithmetic sequences. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you two ways. There's one with the general form, which is kind of ugly. And then I'm going to show you another way with um, kind of the way that I've always been doing it. And um, naturally, I'm going to think that's easier, but obviously it's up to you to choose the, the method which works the best for you. All right, what is a rule for a sequence? A rule is an equation which a sequence or list of numbers follows. Um, it's really that simple. Um, and a lot of folks freak out when they see the word rule because we tend to not like rules. But, I mean, really, it's just an equation that kind of tells us what comes next. So the general form of a rule, and this is the kind of ugly way to see it, uh, a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the product of n minus 1 and d. Uh, what I mean by the product of, I mean like n minus 1 times d. Alright, so let me explain each part of this. The n's. What the n means is the number of term in the sequence. So like the fifth term, the sixth term, the seventh term. Uh, in that case, n would be 5, 6, and 7, respectively. Uh, a sub n means the nth term of a sequence. So whatever that fifth term is, whatever number that would be, that's what a sub n would be, or a sub 5, rather. a sub 1 is the first term of a sequence, and d is our common difference. That's the thing we're adding or subtracting every time uh, to get to the next term in the list. All right, so here's an example. I'm going to ask you to write a rule for the sequence shown below, um, 7, negative 1, negative 9, negative 17. Um, if we use the general form, okay, uh, the first thing we can do is find the first term, which is really straightforward in this case. That's obviously going to be 7. So I know a sub 1 is 7, so where I see a sub 1 in the general form, I pop a 7 in its place. Uh, and now what I need to do is find d. I actually can't find n yet, um, or really in general, unless I ask you for the 51st term or whatever. So I'm going to have to have an n in my, um, in my rule. All right, so now I need to find the common difference. Well, to get from 7 to negative 1, I'm going to subtract 8. And to get from negative 1 to negative 9, I'm going to have to subtract 8 again. And we see that this pattern is going to hold. So that means our common difference is negative 8. So everywhere I see a negative 8 in my general form, I pop the uh, negative 8 in the place of d. Now this is not a friendly equation, so what we're going to need to do is distribute this negative 8. So what I end up with is 7 minus 8n plus 8, collect my like terms, so the 7 and the 8 collect, and I end up with 15 minus 8n. And that's my solution. So I'm supposed to have an n in here, uh, and that's how a rule is supposed to look. If I don't have n, I know I've done something wrong. Okay. <clears throat> so here's another method. Um, I think that the general form shown first is ugly. You know, obviously I stated that. Um, here's how I've always written sequences. Um, and I call this the drop dead gorgeous form, or the alternate form. Uh, a sub 0 plus nd. Once again, n means the nth term of a sequence, the number, I'm sorry, the number of term in a sequence. A sub n is the nth term of a sequence, so like the fourth, fifth, sixth term of the sequence, n is 5, 6, 7. A sub 0 is the zeroth term of a sequence, which is kind of weird if you think about it, like what's the zeroth thing on a list, but uh, it's really straightforward to find that. And d is still our common difference. All right, so for writing this rule, right, if I'm going to use the alternate form, the first thing I want to find is d and I'll show you why here in a sec. So whereas the last method, you know, D was the kind of last thing we needed to find, this time we need to find that first. <coughs> so as stated before, I'm going to be subtracting 8 each time. So I know D is negative 8. So I pop that in there. And now I need to find the zeroth term. Well, I'm given the first term, so I'm going to need to go backwards one to find the zeroth term. Well, all right, what when I subtract 8 uh, from would give me 7? Well, that's obviously going to be 15. So I know a sub 0 is 15. So I basically do the opposite of the common difference from the first term. 
So that's where my 15 goes. And now that just comes out to 15 minus 8n. Here we see I get the same solution. Um, I think this one's a little bit quicker. You just need to go backwards one, and it works itself out. Uh, use whichever method you think is the easiest. If you want to use the general form or the alternate form, uh, I encourage you to do that. And I wish you the best of luck on these problems.